Howdy folks, it's Adriel, the hunting gear guy, and this is the Savage Axis 2. Now I did a review of the Savage Axis 1 about five or eight years ago, something like that, and uh, I really liked them. Uh, this is a inexpensive bolt action hunting rifle that Savage puts out, and uh, I think it's for the dollar, one of the better ones out there. So before we take a closer look at this thing, let's just make sure that we're empty. The chamber is empty, and I can see that the magazine is empty here as well. So why don't we take a closer look? Now on the buttstock of this uh, Savage Axis, we've got a very simple uh, ventilated rear butt pad. So it's got a solid piece of uh, rubber in the middle there, and that's ventilated out to the edges. So it'll be softer on the edges and stiffer in the middle. It's a cheap way of making a, a softer recoiling uh, butt pad. Nothing wrong with that. We've got a metal sling stud here, plastic grip cap. And then as we get into the middle here, this is more of what kind of defines a, an axis. So it's got this plastic bottom uh, here, and we've got uh, actually quite a large uh, safety. Uh, so it's got a very large surface on here, very soft to use, not too stiff at all. Uh, again, doesn't really lock the bolt, it doesn't lock the bolt at all when it's off, but that's not really what it's supposed to do. Uh, with the uh, uh, safety off, we can uh, fire the gun. And since it's an AccuTrigger, let me just make sure my chamber's empty once more. Uh, when we fire it, uh, once that lever gets down there, then our AccuTrigger takes over and it's a very nice light uh, strike to it. So very great there. Uh, the one thing I dislike, again, I'm gonna show it later too, but uh, uh, I have to pull the trigger and push down this guy at the same time to get this bolt out. So kind of kind of a pain in the butt from that perspective. Uh, the bolt itself, uh, and this is what the Savages are kind of famous for, is they've got this uh, floating bolt head in here with this pin. So the bolt will actually uh, move just a tiny little bit and that'll square the lugs off when it fires. Uh, so very cool design and uh, um, just the right compromise between uh, cost cutting and still having like a really accurate uh, rifle for less money. Now to get the to get the bolt back in, we got to do that same dance where you pull the trigger, push this guy down, and we can let the go of the trigger now, and then we can finally slide that bolt in. Not a, I don't really like this. I don't really like having to do this. It's kind of a pain in the butt. You know what? I'm just gonna leave the bolt out for now. I don't think I need to do anything more with it. Uh, now this uh, this one has uh, has wrench flats or grooves, I guess, for the uh, for the barrel nut. Some of the other savages don't. They have run a smooth one. This Axis Two has uh, has those in there for uh, for assembly. Uh, we've got a couple of bases on here, and then we've got that Weaver Caspa uh, three to nine uh, scope on there. Now three to nine is good. This Caspa, I would say, is at the bottom end of what I'd really be comfortable with hunting. Um, it's I don't know. I prefer I prefer my scopes around the two hundred dollar mark. The money really does make a difference uh, with scopes because you get much better optics when you go from a hundred dollar scope to a two hundred dollar scope. Um, when, once we start moving forward here, you're going to see that we've got this uh, grooved kind of a rounded more at the bottom and uh, tighter a little bit at the top uh, uh, forend. It is quite flexy, so uh, a lot of uh, flexibility in this uh, front stock here. And I'm going to show you what you could do to stiffen these up. Uh, we've got a front uh, metal sling stud as well. And like most of the other inexpensive bolt action rifles out there, it's running a free, uh, full free float on the barrel. That's again, easy to make consistent and easy to make accurate. Let's go ahead and disassemble this rifle. I'm just gonna pull the magazine out. So there we can see that metal body. It's made of spring steel with a plastic follower, plastic bottom, and then a plastic uh, clip at the front here that's all part of the magazine. Um, I don't know, I guess if you were like in really cold weather, you might want to worry about this breaking. I haven't managed to break mine and I've been hunting in some really cold stuff, so <laughs> not too much to worry there. It runs a single stack design. You can pop them up from the front. It's not going to hurt these, uh, uh, the spring steel, uh, magazine. You can just pop them in there and it offers a single feed from the top. To, to, to disassemble, I'm going to use a 5 30 seconds Allen key right here and right there. And we're going to pull this whole sucker apart. So I'm going to start at the rear there. There's always a challenge to get enough visibility so I can see what I'm doing and still show you guys what's going on. Let's pull that guy up first. 
And that with that, this whole uh, floor plate comes out. One interesting thing, take a look right there. That is a little mini pillar. So we've got a steel pillar right there. That's part of this trigger guard. And that's because this thing is pillar bedded. So uh, what that means is that it uses these steel sleeves and uh, you can get a, a good torque on this thing and yet still um, not compress the plastic or not get uneven pressure on it. So this is something that was especially important with wood stocked rifles because it would basically pinch your action and your bottom plates together on steel and not on the stock. The stock wouldn't have anything to do with it. It would just be this, this one mass kind of a thing. Uh, with my uh, action screws out, I can now loosen this guy off and I can show you. Uh, now on the axis, this is different than a lot of other rifles. Rather than having the recoil lug on the action, it's actually got it embedded in the stock. So there's that, uh, that steel recoil lug. And then you can see these uh, steel pillars. Uh, we've got one there and we've got one there. So that back one here marries up with the one on the trigger guard so that this has is a fully steel pillar bedded uh, system. Now one thing that's kind of a disadvantage with the axis uh, rifles is that they use a very flexible front stock here. This is very easy to move. Now if you want to stiffen this thing, it's quite a deep channel. What you can do is get two fiberglass arrows and uh, kind of cut out some of these ribs here and epoxy in a fiberglass arrow or two uh, into this foreign. That will stiffen at this thing a ton and uh, and then you don't have to buy an expensive stock. I mean there's, there's some other stocks from Boyd's and that kind of thing that'll be a lot stiffer that uh, you can use but uh, if you're looking for something cheap and cheerful, you, again you can epoxy in. You just need to get it uh, right deep down in there and epoxy in a fiberglass or carbon fiber arrow to uh, add some stiffness to this thing. Now here you can see that Accu trigger system again. This is where you'll uh, the, you'll see the Accu trigger, and you can make your adjustments as well. Uh, one thing I like about the uh, Axis system is that you can see the, the sear is right there. So <laughs> if there's any problems, you'll you'll see them, and they'll they'll be right there because that's where this thing will be pressing forward, and as you push the trigger. It, that's where it falls off. So that's all there is, is right there. So very simple and easy to troubleshoot. On the other side here, you can uh, just see some more of the mechanism as well. There's our safety, which will block off the trigger and there's our safety on. So simple, simple system and uh, adjustable and uh, very great. This was a, a huge innovation when Savage brought this out. Now this axis in particular is in 308. Uh, Savage has done a good job of covering off most of the major uh, cartridges that you'd want to do. And some of the newer ones are even coming in some uh, more specialized uh, cartridges. They've even started to run these in 6.5 Creedmoor, which I really like as a deer hunting cartridge. So uh, I'm hoping to see those a little bit more often around because so far I've seen a lot of the I don't know, quote unquote, boring uh, cartridges that do the job every day, uh, like 308, 30 odd 6, 270, that kind of thing. But it would be nice to see some of these in 6.5. They've also uh, started to do some in stainless, they've done some in wood, and they've started to do some where the, uh, uh, the barrels are heavy. So uh, lots of different uh, selection out there for these Axis rifles. Now in terms of usability on the Savage Axis, there's uh, a couple things I really like and one thing I really dislike. So the things I like, the, uh, the big safety on the back here, it's very large, it's easy to actuate, it's right where your thumb could be if you're hunting, so you can leave it on safe up until the time when you see a, uh, an animal. You can have it up at your uh, eye and you can flip that safety off without moving your hand at all. So. Uh, I think the, uh, the safety is in the right spot. Uh, when the safety is off, it doesn't lock the, uh, the bolt, so the bolt will just still run with the safety on. Um, that's more of a style choice. If you're going to really abuse your rifle and, and take it out on a backcountry hunt or something like that, you may want one that locks the bolt so that it doesn't accidentally open as you're uh, wandering around the woods and I don't know, bashing through, through the forest and that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, the, the other thing I really like on this rifle is the trigger pull. So I have confirmed that this thing's empty. It's a center fire rifle, so uh, dry firing it is safe. And uh, I really like the uh, Aki trigger because it doesn't really have much movement to it and it's uh, nice and light. It's also adjustable, so if I want to adjust it a little bit lighter, I can. Um, I believe this one's pulling at right around four pounds, which is good enough for me and uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, the recoil pad is nice and springy. This is, <laughs> this is something like, I don't know if, if new hunters realize this, but like 
uh, 10, 20 years ago, most rifle butt pads were like hockey pucks or they were a plastic or they're a metal. And uh, these days we're really spoiled with these nice squishy butt pads that uh, really conform to our shoulders and don't really beat us up. If, especially if we, if we go to the range and uh, fire a whole bunch, bunch of rounds, uh, having a nice soft butt pad is, is kind of nice. Uh, the uh, uh, one thing that I'm just kind of like eh on is, uh, is the magazine. Uh, it's got this plastic front here, metals on the side, but uh, trying to get it in there. This one especially is quite tight, so I don't know if you can see that there, but trying to push it in, I really have to muscle it in there to get it finally to uh, click on there. I'll try to get it close to my microphone here so you can hear that click there, but uh, it is very secure and it's not really going to rattle as, as you move this rifle around. So. Um, you know, pros and cons on a, on a really tight magazine fit like that. Uh, the one thing I dislike about the Savages, and, and it's, it's been the case for, for years now and, and always the same, is the uh, bolt release on them. Because it's uh, not quite as easy, you have to pull the trigger and pull this little lever back here. Come on, come on. And then finally you get the thing out. And then on, same thing on the way in. You got to push both of them and then you can finally get that uh, that bolt in there. Most of their competitors these days have like a bolt button on the left hand side or with the Remingtons it's kind of down here. <laughs> it's just way easier to get the bolt out. Um, but the bolt is like uh, uh, very difficult to bind. Um, you know, compared to some of the other uh, very inexpensive like budget bolt actions uh, uh, rifles out there. A lot of them will bind if you hit the uh, the bolt handle off axis. So if you hit it at the at the very edge there and kind of push it up and out, it won't go in. With this Savage, it's very difficult to bind it up. It's not a super smooth bolt action, but it's it is very difficult to uh, to bind up. So there is an advantage to uh, uh, to using the tolerances that they have and the design that they have on here. So um, even though it's not the smoothest bolt action out there, I still really like it. I still think especially for the price, it's a fantastic buy. Thanks for watching.